Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We're coming to you from Waikiki Beach, and today we have with us Rose Ray, who is the who had the vision to start Radiant Magazine and Valiant Magazine, and is a great writer. We're going to be talking about her new book, Defend Us in Battle. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. This is actually being recorded the day after Valentine's Day, which is one of the gnarliest, scariest days in the life of a man. Can he make, can he make it all happen, you know? Uh, especially if you really love your, your spouse. Yesterday, my wife and I went down to the Waikiki Yacht Club, uh, and we were able to take a 20, little 20-foot sailboat out through the harbor and sail out into the bay in front of Waikiki. And my wife sailed, and I sailed. And then we came back into the harbor, and she ran, and ran to get all pretty. And I sat down at this beautiful table overlooking the sparkling lights uh, from the yacht club out over the forest of sailboat uh, rigging uh, that lies between there and the open ocean. It was for, so peaceful, so calm, so romantic, very much like it was uh, the night of uh, a, a day in night in in the 1940s when some people sailed down, some military people sailed down from Pearl Harbor and just anchored there we're gonna, and we're barbecuing there. We're gonna plan it to barbecue. When suddenly uh, they heard the sound of, of uh, Japanese Zeros coming in overhead and they, they abandoned their boats and, and made a run to go to Pearl Harbor to take their stations and so began this great battle. But that great battle, that great, that great uh, fight that they they took on to protect to protect uh, the free world really to protect not just america but the free world uh from the onslaught of evil uh allowed me and my wife to have this peaceful tranquil time in that harbor that they left and, and abandoned their boats and they came back after the war their boats were still anchored there and they formed the waikiki yacht club so uh our, we we remember those men as a time when america America was attacked on our own land. And today we're going to remember another man who responded to a call to defend America when 9-11 uh, occurred, another occasion when America was attacked on our own own homeland. And we have Rose Ray here. Rose, aloha. Welcome to the Bear aloha. Wozniak Adventure. Rose, is, this is, our I think, our second visit. And I think we also had your husband, Ryan, on at one point, who was a Navy SEAL. And he we had to drag him to get on this on this this show and i think at that time we really couldn't reveal even who he was and right. uh and you and you you're the founder of valiant magazine and radiant magazine and uh can you tell us just a moment or two about about that valiant effort Ah, oh, so fun to rest in the presence of like a fellow soldier for spiritual <laughs> warfare right bear yeah, so i just right. am so happy to be with you today um you know, I think, you know, we're all called to something, right? How can we serve with our gifts and our talents? And I just grew up loving magazines. I love the whole mm. picture of it because I love to read all my life. I always read. But then you add photography in there and you add little bits and pieces. And it just, it's a great experience. But the it was so, I was so left wanting because I love my face so much mm. that all of these publications out there for women, especially just treated the outside, right? buy this, buy that, get that nail polish, get that dress, must have for spring. And I was like, ah. And <laughs> like, the list, just... the endless list, right? The endless list. <laughs> I was like, well, what about me? Am I, am I okay with anything, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I knew I was because we're a daughter of Christ, but I was like so many people, we're so much more than that. 
So when I founded Radiant Valley Magazine there in 2009, it was really just, oh, and after college, Steubenville, I mean, God trained me because I worked at a beautiful magazine down in Naples, Florida mm-hmm. called Home and Design Magazine. Mm. So, you know, we can look back at our lives, but it was all being trained. But I went off on my own and started those publications because it was, I wanted to treat the interior. Mm. Like, let's feed our souls, right? Mm-hmm. So that's where those magazines came from. And men and women's spirituality are very different. So it's so beautiful to have a female publication and a male filled with just beautiful things i remember when when did valiant magazine come out the first issue was about 2012 yeah yeah so i i gotta i gotta think the exact time i think that one was 2016 maybe yeah yeah and that was and that of course that's directed towards men all men you know you were in there remember i put you (laughs) in there in your motorcycle ride i mean just (laughs) strong men that their whole vocation wasn't just to preach your vocation mm. was living out what mm. is holiness in mm. your respective vocations. So mm. it was a blast. You well know? said. Cops yeah. and you bear and, uh, you know, soldiers and priests. And it was so yeah. fun. So then I sold it to our Sunday visitor bear. So they I now know. It's so, uh, I mean, that's just so, because I, re- I saw the first magazine and then it was just only a few years later than uh, OSV picked it up it's just so just yep. so great so, so radio needed. magazine is online now they have a website you can they're they're doing a beautiful job mm. it was a season of life so i have now moved on um to uh, did a coffee table book on the sacraments uh, yes. with sophia like you Ooh, we love sophia. sophia so much yes they're so wonderful and then now we're going to talk about um the book today that uh you know i just i call them bear i call them my love letters to god you know anything that yes. really pierces my heart it's it's for him and for souls, yes. you know, of yeah. course, great if it's successful. And if it's not, that's fine, too. These are really about the families and the stories we tell. It's about it's about them. I'm going to do world. I'm going to do my best Doug Keck imitation book notes. I think it, I, forget, I think that's his show. I remember yeah. I've been on his show a couple of times and he'll he has my book in front of him and he's got these little sticky notes and. It's like an open book test for a book that I wrote three years earlier or something. So like, don't ask me that question, you know. <laughs> like, I may not remember the answer, but this book I got up early this morning when it was when it was dark out, and started reading. And suddenly I looked up and oh my gosh, it's time for me to interview or interview you. So, I the the book is so well written. I think it's a wonderful book for fathers to read uh, to their sons or to their family. I I, I look for books like that where um, it's something that you can read after dinner, after the rosary or something, and, uh, and then talk story about, about uh, the images in here. So m- and many of them I can identify with too personally. So, but I'm a little bit concerned that almost how to ask you questions about, without giving away the way you told the story. So I wonder if you could just uh, t- talk story. You know, let, I'm going to let you uh, carry, carry the ball now and you know, how it is that it came to you to write this book. And then I love the way the the story takes place immediately you're brought into Ramadi Iraq so would you just give us that give us that background yeah I mean gosh we could start you know a little a little background you know even before and you said to kind of maybe bring some spiritual warfare notes into this Mm -hmm. story even before my husband and I we met on an airplane funny enough by the way um which is totally divine you know meeting uh I was praying to St. Raphael praise God really praise God Yep. And uh, the prayer really literally goes, if anyone knows it, it's like, Dear St. Raphael, Archangel of Happy Meetings, guide us who travel by sea, land, air, etc., etc. I had it in my makeup bag um, there. But how funny that we met traveling. I guess what mm-hmm. SEAL stands for, sea, land, and air. It was yes, just, that's God right. Yeah. Summer. Yes. So anyway, though, even before we were about to get married, there was tons of turmoil, like right before our wedding day. And it was just these weird things like this popped up, this popped up and nothing was wrong. But it was so like you could feel that like Mm. there was friction, not wanting this union. Spiritual warfare. Yeah. Total spiritual warfare. But and I say this because we're going to get to why that matters with this book. Right. Defend us in battle. Yes. Yep after St. Michael prayer, of course, but so praise the Lord, you know, the angels were around, uh, you know, we got married. Now we have six children there. We're almost 16 years of marriage. Really? Wow. Yes. Wow. So fruitful, man. We've got us good. But all these years later, you know, he always supported, you know, when I felt inspired to do the magazines and then felt inspired to do the book on the sacraments, because that is what sets our faith apart. Our beautiful mm-hmm. Lord and Savior in the Eucharist. Um, 
and that was wonderful. But then I wanted to preface this before we jump into the story, that scripture about if, you know, unless a grain of wheat, what is it trampled mm. on or something, how can, you know, things sprout And the point being that something must die, right? Mm. For life then to move forward. So we know our Lord has he passed in the um, crucifixion to give us new life in baptism, right? Our old self dies to in uh, born again, our new self. You know, it's not nearly as profound, but in project wise, I had to pass off Radiant and Valiant, which were my Yes, your babies. Kids. I know how that feels. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. Know that feels fair? My babies for ten yeah. years. Yeah. But I knew, which I'll go into with the book, I knew God was calling me to do this, mm. to tell this sweet boy's story, who was a, you know, absolute ferocious, amazing gentleman, um, mm. full of virtue and, and courage. But he didn't give it to me first. He literally, our Lord was like, are you willing to give up everything for this? Mm. And I was like, I remember saying the rosary when it came time to sign the renewal for my magazines, mine, right? But they were mm. still for our Lord. And I knew mm. an ultimate faith and total trust and surrender even if the story, if it wasn't going to be, because obviously, you know, you, we need a publisher, even if mm. it wasn't meant to be that God was asking this of me, not knowing mm. whether whether my will would be done. It was his. So I remember having saying no after discerning and it was so terrible. And I was like, Lord, I hope this is what you want. And I knew it was what he wanted, but it was super painful is my point. Mm. And sure enough there, after that, it was only a month or two later where Harper Horizon, an imprint of Harper Collins, one of the largest publishers right. in the United States, they said, we're doing this. And it was after so much prayer and sacrifice and so much trials. And that's when I knew like this was God's will, but it was, it was painful, man. I just want your listeners to know, I mean, his way is so painful, but <laughs> it is so painful and so worth it. We're talking with Rose Ray. She's the author of a new book, Defend Us in Battle. we got to take a break. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Save the date. We're inviting all the men 
uh, all of our listeners to come to uh, Melbourne, Florida, May 19th through the 21st for a Man Cave uh, meetup, Bear School of Manliness meetup. We're going to be meeting on Friday night, uh, stay there Saturday night, and then you guys can head home from wherever you are in the hinterlands of America or around the world. We, we're going to be up to no good because when uh, when God gather, when God gathers men together, our, the men that we gather together, we call ourselves the misfits. Uh, you think about King David and the cave of, cave of Adullam where he was he was kind of on the run from uh from Saul who was trying to kill him and what God did is he gathered together the misfits in this cave men who were running from the law maybe from their mother-in-law men who were uh were uh, you know just just broke or poor and didn't know what to do with their lives they all showed up in this cave and god began to form them and they began to form each other as well and uh, and they became the mighty men of valor uh, king david's mighty men of valor so we're looking for men who who are uh, up for a challenge who want to have a new uh a new uh, empowerment in their lives and who want to uh, join with other brothers. By the way, you can't grow in holiness or grow in, in being valiant without other brothers. And so we're going to be doing some deep d- deep study. We're going to have some deep conversation. We're not sure. We might have a play nine holes of, of uh, full contact golf. We're not sure what, what we're up to. We may do some surfing there maybe do some cornhole we're not sure what all it's about but the evenings will end up with uh whiskey and cigars on the beach and some deep conversation so c- come join us may 19th to the 21st in melbourne florida and go to deepadventure.com deepadventure.com uh to join up so we're talking today with rose ray rose uh new book is defend us in battle it's a type of book that you can pick up and read in one sitting because i did and uh, it just it's just a it's a it's a easy read but it's a captivating read that just draws you through it so we were talking rose about how there's this moment there are these moments in life when god causes you causes you to die to a vision and it is like it is that death and resurrection of a vision you know like joseph was uh joseph of the old testament well you're going to be the all your brothers will bow down to you next thing you know he's in a pit and then he's a slave in in egypt and then he's in prison in egypt and yet God raises, God resurrects that vision. And then you think about uh, Jesus himself when he died on the cross. Everyone thought, well, there, there goes that vision. I mean, you know, his, his disciples his all, all ran. But then Jesus resurrected that vision. So if you're in a time in your life when you have dreams and you have desires that are perhaps they're, they're God-given, there will come a time, especially if it's God-given, when God will call you, cause you to die to that and say, uh, to, like Moses, Moses, throw down that rod. And in your own hands, it, it's a hissing snake. But then when God says to pick up that rod, when, God, when you die to a vision, and then God, if it is God's will for that vision, when he tells you that to uh, pick it up again, when that vision comes back to life, it says that the rod of Moses became the rod of God. So in our lives, there's times of death. There's times of dying to self, dying to dreams. And maybe sometimes that's good because maybe sometimes those dreams aren't from the Lord. But if he, but he also brings new life into, new vision into our lives and new, new grand new beginnings. And and so uh, we're talking with Rose Ray. This book kind of had that kind of death and resurrection life in her own life. She wanted to write it, and then it was it, it, it died. The vision died, and then she and then it was given back to her, which then you know has that anointing, the the resurrection glory, and power of the Lord. Rose, tell us about that day uh, your book immediately takes us almost immediately immediately to the battlefield in Iraq. Yeah, so um, I'm going to back up for one second sure. though because once we were able to get with the publisher the book hadn't been written. So and I, I funny enough um, Bear, I didn't. I wasn't even going to write it. I was just going to compile it. I was going to work with the writer, and so um, I didn't even know about this gentleman, which will preface a little bit. His name was Michael Montsour. Yes. Um, he was a Navy SEAL, and he stood up just like you said at the beginning of the show to serve. He stood up to serve after September 11th, and he said, "I will go." You know, all these guys that were like enlisting by um, on their own free will. Uh, after we were uh, threatened on our own soil by September 11th, he was one of them. And uh, you know how you talk, he's the perfect example. When you talk about the misfits in the cave is perfect because mm-hmm. Michael was not perfect. He was an adrenaline, like crazy, fearless young kid who wanted to like take on the world, right? 
So um, after you know all these years of marriage, um, what happened was my husband went to this huge Navy missile, uh, missile guided destroyer, brand new ship. Oh really? He was on. The, oh, okay. Sorry, I keep, keep going. No, Ryan's Sorry. not on a ship. He, they specifically SEAL Team Three. My husband is, is still active. Mm. Uh, went to the ship uh, commissioning ceremony. Well, the commissioning wow. ceremony there is um, a ship is named after a hero of some sort. So we've yes. got, you know, uh, you know, they've Lincoln and all these different ships. Um, and so uh, he came back and he brought this little book who the ship was named after. Well, you know, it was named after a certain young gentleman, Michael Monsoor, and I had never heard of him, even mm -hmm. though I've been a SEAL wife all these years. And he gives me the book and I open it up and it said one little paragraph about this young man's life. He's so young, 25 mm -hmm. years old. And once I read that little paragraph there, a bomb like went off in mm. my heart. It was mm. like, you have to tell this boy's story. And I was mm -hmm. like, what? What's mm -hmm. going on? And no idea. But guess what? We never know all the time when God asks something of us. I was like, okay. <laughs> and through that it took years. I, I reached out to his family. So mm. going back to the spiritual yeah. warfare pair before we got married, guess what? If my mm. husband wasn't at SEAL Team 3, at the commissioning of that ship, oh my I would goodness! Have never told this boy. Story. You wouldn't. You would not have met him. Never have met uh, the family or anything. And um, so Michael was Bud's class. It's the rigorous training to go through. I'll tell. I'll talk a little. Well, bit here's about what's it. interesting about Rose is her husband being a Navy SEAL, and such a wonderful author. You're able to tell this story because you get into the nuts and bolts of things too. Like, oh well, that's interesting. Just on the, just the nuts and bolts of 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 the training and. And the and the combat situation, your your use of of um, the vocabulary you use isn't something that we're often you know uh, exposed to. So you really are the right person to tell this story. The perfect person, but guess what? I did not write those words. Who do you think wrote those words, Bear? You tell me. My husband. Yeah, well, of course. Yeah, he was your he was your consultant, right? I mean, I can hear. I I mean, I knew that when reading. Yeah, I could hear that. Oh, the, she. I know who. I know who gave her that background oh, gave her that my feeling. husband so we did it together we did every page i had an amazing writer on board uh who was so prayerful and was a part of this project at the beginning and he's phenomenal um but george michael's father so really fast when i i, I was like ryan i have to tell this story and ryan's like okay but he knows not to mess with me when i'm like i know God. you're on a mission yeah <laughs> right yeah <laughs> And it took two years. His family was like, nope, um, I'm not. Mm. My my son just, I got to let this be. It's too raw. I don't want to share yeah. this story with the world. I've just, we've been through too much. They lost right. their son. You know? Right, yes. Um, but Bear, you know, little by little met with, you know, them. And I think the world of them, they're phenomenal. No wonder their son was so amazing. But I also respected their privacy. So I did the 54-day novena. I'm sure you've probably done that at uh -huh. some point. So powerful to our blessed mother. And I was like, Lord, you started this. If you want this story told, right. the parents have to be on board. I will never do it without them. Plus, all of his SEAL teammates would never speak unless they knew right. the parents were on board. Right. They haven't said they don't speak about stuff. This is their brother in arms, you know? Right. So Bear, little by little, like every little piece came into place. And it was only through our well, Lord. It's not, it's, so, not just, it's not just a story. It's, it's, uh, it's in, it's in, it inspires us all to... Um, to live that valiant life that this man lived. It's not just here, hey, here's a really good story. No, this is this is something that inspires men and women, you know, to paid to, for uh, in blood. Right. Paid for in right. blood with his very life. So we're on sacred ground today. Absolutely. And um, and I kept his dad was the hardest one to convince and George, who then George, is, yeah. did the book with me, by the way. George and Rose. Oh my but, goodness. I didn't Yes. Yes. Yep. Wow. I, we were we worked side by side, Bear. It was an absolute pleasure. He's right about your age, so he's a tough dude. He's been yeah. through a lot. He's a prior Marine. He's seen a lot. And yes. He's phenomenal. Right. And his mother, uh, Sally, in the book, you talk about how just before he went from the Corvette to the chaos of war, and almost overnight, uh, he had a new Corvette. He I don't believe he had even ridden it yet. And I don't know if it was a new Corvette, but it was new to him. And he took his mother Sally on a ride. <laughs> She was, he was getting well over 120, and she's like, "Okay, you can you can slow down." But she must have she's been a like, kick too. Crazy. Yeah, right, right. Uh, well, we're so talking to Rose. We're, we're, we're talking. We're talking to Rose Ray. We're, time is flying by, Rose. We're talking with Rose Ray. We're reading the book "Defend Us in Battle." I always take the covers off. Sorry, I shouldn't do that for the show, but no, uh, when I'm reading them, 
and it's about a beautiful young man, Michael Mansour, gave his life uh, for you and for I and for his country and for truth and for justice as a Navy SEAL uh, in Iraq. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is General Boo Markham with another episode of Country Up, Loner. Once upon a time, there was a cowboy named Loner. Loner wanted to be a lawman, wrangled his way to get deputized as a posse member. Strange bird he was, criticized the posse regular like saying because the fellow posse member offended him and the sheriff disappointed him that he wasn't going to ride with the posse no more, nor take direction from the undersheriff. He chortled, I can hunt down bad guys on my own. Adding, don't need no gulderin posse in spite of what it says in that old tattered posse manual. Well, Loner was eventually bushwhacked and killed by Scarface Joe. That's what happens when you ride alone facing evil. Loners like folks who say they don't need the church to be a Christian, in spite of what the Lord Marshal says and in spite of what the Lord's Manual says. Fact is, two-thirds of the Lord's Manual, the New Testament, lacks context apart from Christians participating as a member of a local church. It was that tough old sodbuster, the Apostle Paul, who wrote to the Corinthians that a Christian saying, can't say in truth he doesn't need the church, said it's like an eye saying it doesn't need the hand. Sure, there's going to be some daggum hard things to follow in the manual. The sheriff can be mystifying at times, and yes, there's always a posse member that will offend us. Truth is, you'll not be effective in defeating evil apart from the posse and reading the manual. You'll get taken out by someone far wilier than Scarface Joe. So, ride with the posse. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We got really good news. My sons Shane and Joshua Wozniak have been working so hard, and I guess I have a little bit to do with it too, editing the fourth season of Long Ride Home. We have, I believe it's gonna be 12 episodes of Ooh. Long Ride Home. Yeah, riding motorcycles in, in Hawaii and uh, learning a lot from the, the Hawaiian culture uh, and and uh, the beauty of Hawaii about uh our walk with the Lord, and we invite so many amazing people into our show. So, look forward on EWTN soon, and then in about six months or so after it airs, it'll be on Prime Video. But you can go to um, uh, deepadventure.com and join the man cave or the mama bears. And if you do, then you get the sneak prelude. You get the rough, the 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 rough cut. What we mean by that is it's our version before EWTN takes it and says, change this, change this, get rid of that, add that. So you'll get the rough cut. Uh, actually, probably six or seven months before it even airs. So go to deepadventure.com, become a mama bear, or join the man cave. We're talking with Rose Ray and her book, <clears throat> Defend Us in Battle. Um, Rose, let, let's dig into this story now. <laughs> let's do it. So, um, but what I wanted to finish was, so my husband was one Bud's class behind Michael Monster. Was he 251 then? 251. Mm -hmm. So when I, when his father finally said yes, he would do it, Bear, and I was spent hours and hours interviewing his teammates and closest friends and all this stuff, they told me these phenomenal stories, right? Mm. That a lot hadn't been shared before. But mm. once they knew George was, was open to doing mm. this, they just, 
oh my gosh like i sometimes had to set up second third interviews there was so much to say. well there, there's we, something there's something about this story too that i think is so cool when michael went to buds the first time after just a, a week or two or uh, his feet were so destroyed that he couldn't possibly take another step. They were, there was raw sand uh, rubbing into these wounds. And he had to die to that vision too, didn't he? He had to, there's, so, so one of the keys to success is failure. When, yes. when I start working with people, like I'm a CPA in, in my past, I'd help people start their new businesses. I would always ask them, so what businesses have you failed at so far? That's such a great question. If they hadn't failed, then I go, uh-oh, this is going to be trouble. I was teaching two, young, two priests uh, to surf the other day, Father Bryce Lundgren and Father Joe Paddock from Montana and Wyoming. Father Bryce is a cowboy priest. And I was teaching them to surf, and they were worried about falling. I go, look, if you get up and you surf and you, and, uh, and, and you ride that board perfectly the first time up, that means you didn't learn anything. You don't even know what you did right. It's from falling that you that you learn, and I know when Michael went through that initial buds class, and he had to, he had to quit, had to ring that bell three times. That when he came back the next time, he was he was probably had some certain things that he did a little bit differently to protect his feet, or and he, he knew what 100%. he was up to, and then he made it. They made it all the way through to becoming a Navy SEAL. So anyway, so 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 he was in. He graduated. Bud's class. So my husband was one Bud's class behind Michael. And then so uh, so before we jump into chapter one there, what happened was only through the grace of God, not only was I a seal wife, but a Catholic with this vision to share this Catholic yes, warrior this story. Young, yes. After all these boys, these boys, now they're men, men but yeah. they shared their stories of Michael. It's not like they knew what it tasted like or what the air felt like. or You know, you don't remember 15, 20 years ago, but my husband brought all of that to life because he walked right beside them through all of these things. So once mm -hmm. we had all the stories, we were able to put in the details of like what it felt like, well, what the air, the moon dust. I know that. You, yes. The way you, you described that, I was like, oh, so, but we got to get into the story now because we're running Let's out of time. So, yes. so okay. go ahead. So. T can, so can we tell jump us? right in there. Yeah. So again, I'm not really a writer. I'm more of a creator. Of, I had the vision. I mean, through prayer, I knew exactly how to build the hero. Along right, you're with a storyteller. Yeah. I'm a storyteller, but thank God I had the best writers in the world. I had George to tell me stories of his son, Sally, his soldiers, and then my husband, the beautiful, you know, details. Yeah, he are brings all, it he brings it to life. No brings doubt. Brings it all together, man. Every page. You can tell. Fight. Yeah, you can smell the the gunpowder in your book. It's for sure. all gunpowder there, it's bare. So I wanted to jump right into the action. I didn't want to spend all these chapters waiting when's it gonna start. Guys love action, right, Bear? You can attest. Louis so Lamar, right I got a into Ramadi where Michael, as a 25-year-old, he got um, a silver star for. I mean, we're talking blasted mm. with bullets, being shot at him from everywhere, and he's zooming out to f help his fallen friend and his teammate. No regard for his life. He's just running out into the bullet. Um, with a 100-pound uh, gun, Rock, I don't know. Yep, all yeah. this kit stuff on. And sure enough, this, um, this young man, who is also a new guy like Michael, um, he sees wings, literal wings on Michael around him, shielding them from bullets. Michael grabs his handle uh, and pulls him to safety. And then, um, so, you know, right away, we want to be bring the readers in. Like, this is no joke. War is crazy, it is terrible, and it is life risking all the, uh, often. And, my, and, my, and Michael was named after a, a soldier. Exactly. So then we start well, at the very beginning once well, we bring people who, who, in. Who is this soldier that Michael was named after? So his father chose the names for the boys of their family, and he chose to name him after St. Michael the Archangel, which was so fitting. Who's, a sol <laughs> who's a, definitely a soldier. And, and, so, and right guess what else St. Michael said? I will serve. We know that. You know? Yes. Praise God. Who is like thee unto God? Or I mean, I forget the exact thing they say. When, when Satan it's rebelled. Himself. And yes. and Michael, Michael who Michael, by the way, people think of Michael the Archangel as being this way high-ranking angel. Actually, in the in the in the in the the different choirs of angels, there's angels, there's archangels, and then there's all these other levels of angels. He's not he's not the highest-ranking angel. He's like he's like a he's higher than a foot soldier, but he's 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 right there at that le at that level. But he God didn't say I'm going to take my seraphim. You guys go over there and kick in and kick you know satan out he sent michael the archangel so satan was defeated by 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 an angel or by angels that were 
lower in rank, you know, in heavens That's than, than so he was. Powerful. Yeah. And then we just tell his story, Bear. So, you know, I want to tell some parts, but not to ruin too many things. But, you know, what was he like as a child, right? He was crazy, but he fought asthma. And instead of just saying, and he fought okay, bullies. Fought, he fought bullies, too. He fought bullies, up, and, you know, he would swim harder it, in the wait, pool. He fought, bullies, he fought bullies. He fought bullies. You know, a lot of people have experienced this. I know, I, I just to share a personal experience, when I was young, I, was the, I went to school a year earlier than I should have. Uh, okay. And and because my my mom was going through things with childbirth and stuff, so so I was bullied a lot, and I was and I we moved a lot, and so and the thing is is here's something that's interesting, as a being bullied, I would um I would fight, even though I knew I was going to lose, I would fight, and I just remember in my thirties. Uh, the Lord just had a clear word for me. I was in the backyard mowing the yard, and the Lord was like the Lord is saying, because you fought and you lost all those fights, does that make you a loser? And then it was like the Holy Spirit. No, be, knowing that you were going into, you are going in over your head and fought anyway, that makes you a fighter. It doesn't make you a loser. And so here you have Michael, a young man with asthma, taking on a, a three or four bullies uh yeah bigger the, than him but yeah. he knew in his heart but actually, like he did, this was wrong <laughs> but he had a very ninja way about him he he did he did end up having his victory that day he did and you know we they can read the book to find out but yeah. you know he's on this park and he's scrambling and he outsmarted them and it's very yeah, navy seal like very navy seal like very what navy he did. seal like but yeah. he knew at a young age and he had such a wonderful father he had a desire for justice he said this isn't just because they were bullying other kids justice. yeah which, yeah. which shows Bear like he had been set aside by our Lord, you know, forever to do this. And, and the other thing about it, when, when he when he was young, when he played, he was playing football, kind of like, not I think it was junior high school football, a scrimmage, yep. and a big part of his team walked off because they were getting bl obliterated so badly, yep. and he was upset. So he he developed uh, the, the 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 virtue of justice. He had the the virtue of fortitude, of coraggio, not fortitude. to quit. Yeah unbreakable will and then we get to the point where he decides to become and you know try to become a navy seal which we know is some of the most rigorous training right in the world and the first time he does he gets injured and he has to quit like he cannot go on physically his feet would not let him go well, on. let me let me say this okay i'm sorry to interrupt you but no, this is course. very personal to me after someone goes through cancer treatment you know when you're when you're in the, when you're a navy when you're going through buds and you have to quit. You go up and you ring that bell three times. Well, there's so many people right now battling, 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 like my son Joshua fighting cancer. And I know that for me, when I went through that battle myself, when I was done, I got to ring my bell too. So there's there's people who may not be in battle right now in a, in a war zone, but they're battling cancer or they're battling other things in their life. And uh, 100%. yeah, and and so we're that we're right there with you. Our hearts and our soul are right. There with you. I've interrupted Rose Ray enough. I promise you, when we come back, I'll let her finish the carry you carry you along deeply into the story of of uh, Navy Seal uh, Michael Monsoor in in her book Defend Us in Battle and the story of how he gave his life. We'll be right back with Rose Ray. But Rose, where can people find you? You know, I'm kind of behind the scenes because I'm still a Navy SEAL wife, so I yes. like to lay low. But they can find the book on Amazon, Walmart, Barnes & Noble, anywhere books are sold. Really? In in Walmart? In Barnes & Noble? That You know, it's so fun. It's sick cool, isn't it, when you walk in and your book's in Barnes & Noble? Pretty fun. It's pretty cool. In the cool. library. There's like holds on the library for That's it, wonderful. It needs to be in the libraries, too. Her book is Defend Us in Battle. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different Tally Awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wasnick Adventure on EWTN. 
Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station while you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha this is bear wasnick i want to invite the mama bears out there we have something so cool we have something called the man cave it's for men okay but it, it, the man cave is like a non-facebook community for men where they can share what's going on in their lives the the raw and the real people keep saying men need to be vulnerable and men just like what i'm not gonna be vulnerable but i'll be raw and real and i'll get gritty and that's what you find at the man cave but we also have this three-year curriculum this three-year school for manliness my new book 12 rules uh, uh for manliness where have all the cowboys gone will be out soon by sophia but we have this three-year curriculum and it's so cool because as men we go through that curriculum together we have the man cave zoom meet up once a once a month and then the, and there's several videos and audio and written material and self-assessments in each month of the school of manliness and there's there's three-year cycle but wherever you start if you start you know and we're in year two month three you just jump in right where we are but this is what i want to say this is really an incredible gift mama bears listen to me this is something for the men the husbands to lead their sons through with them the sons can't be part of the man cave but the fathers can lead their sons. The sons can have their own logins. The fathers can track their progress through the curriculum. And, and you know, two, three, maybe once a week or twice a month, they can sit down and watch one of the videos and the audios. Because when you ask a teenage son how school today, they're going to say, okay, what did you do? Same old thing. But it, you can start talking about, well, we have great quotes from the Wyoming Catholic cowboy priest Bryce Lundgren, and we have uh, videos and audios, some excerpts from Long Ride Home. It's something that you can get with your sons and teach them, share with them uh, how they too, what, what manliness is about, and that helps them to grow in manliness. And speaking of manliness, we're talking with Rose Ray, her husband, Ryan I've had on my show, he's the Navy SEAL, and uh, Rose Ray has written a book called Defend Us in Battle about a young man who gave his life for his brothers and for us in, uh, in Iraq, uh, Michael Mansour. So you've got six minutes. You better just we run. Can do it. Okay. So, you know, as we're saying, so this collective effort, you know, from the father, the men, my husband, myself, right, we're all here to tell the world. George, his father said, what finally got him to say yes, Bear, was he said, my son was so much more than the boy who just jumped on the grenade. So let's get, that's why we build this background, like you and I are talking. So he gets to try out the first time he fails because his feet basically failed him. So then his mother says he has to go to Italy for two years and you got to work and do your billet before you can try again. So he's like, what's the fastest way I can get back? And it was to go to this place, Siganella, Italy. And so guess what, Bear? I don't know if you read it, but in the oh, book, yeah. you hear the quote, he told his brother, he goes, do you remember? Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just read it this morning, but go ahead. They'll have to drag my dead body off the beach before I'll quit again. Nah. So literally he went back with that mindset, spent two years training his slender body, diving down. Jumping, seven, that, that's a huge cliff. They would jump off, off of. Did you and, see do, that and dodging <laughs> birds that were protecting their young. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't so have never made that know, jump. That was a, that's a big either. jump. It's insane. Absolutely yeah. insane. And you got to leap past the rocks to hit the water, you know, so. And they did it all the time to train their bodies so he came back and to train their mind to faster. train their to and train their will yeah train their will bear so he mm. comes back just 
on fire and he mm-hmm. knocks it out of the park you know meets these not only does he knock it out of the park he helps his brothers through too yep, he was, you hear yeah. the guys he helped the close friends mm-hmm. he made that you know and you just really it's a beautiful beautiful story of brotherhood all mm-hmm. the way through then he's this new guy they find out they're going to the hottest spot you know one of the hottest spots in iraq yeah, that- uh to a body. You're right. Well, uh, bullets flying missions almost every single day. And he, you know, then we're brought connected back. I wanted to connect back again to that first scene, right, where he's saving his friend. And they're just all and I purposely dated all of these chapters right. in war, because guess what? Those were after action war reports that we brought to life. Mm. They're actual facts like this is not some sensationalized story. Right. This happened. Michael lived this. You know, there's jets they're calling in, you know, they're. Um, you know, taking out bad guys. I mean, it was just, it's its unbelievably it's amazing what they went over there to do, and they did it well, and they did it together. You know, you find out they go to this war-torn, just dilapidated I mean, he, building. He, he, he's driving with his mother in a Corvette one day, and within a week, hes or even less, he's, he's, he's dropping in right to where the war zone is. From, from this life to and another life, from amazing. Totally fearless. And uh, then we find out he meets this priest. Mm. He, his Catholic faith is super important to him, but we didn't, it's, it's all throughout the book. It's not in your face because the family didn't want it to be overbearing, mm-hmm. but it's just enough to be like, oh, that's where he Yeah, I remember to. that moment when he says, I want to go to confession. I'm a Catholic. I want to go to confession. So in right. the middle of war, God gives them these men, this incredibly masculine, I call him a BA priest. Yeah, like, tough, so tough guy, right, yeah. Tough guy, and I got to interview him. What a gift. You and did, so, wow. Michael finds him, and then they develop this relationship. I mean, Michael was in and out all the time, but he always came back for the sacraments. Praise Mass God. when he could go in this crazy little chapel, you know, that wasn't right. a chapel. It was like right. a beat-up room. Right. And uh, and confession bear. And it's like, Mm. you know, these superhero movies. I mean, he is a true these men and women out there who give everything are true superheroes. When we fill ourselves up with the body and blood of Christ, there's nothing stronger Mm. in this world than that. And then he goes on, as we find out, you know, we won't go too into it, but that fateful day. I mean, the guys even went home. They were at the end of their deployment, six months of craziness, right, which we highlight right. some of the biggest missions in the book. And Michael stayed. It, He's like, nope, I'm going to finish this out. Some that When one of the guys expecting a baby with his wife, the other guys have kids, you know, all these other reasons, Michael stays. Mm. And then you find out what happens, that fateful mission, and why he made a conscious decision when a grenade was thrown on top of the rooftop. Um, where he could have jumped the other way, he jumped a fully and intentionally in within seconds on top of that grenade bear to shield his brothers in arms who it, all came home because of that. It speaks about virtue. Virtue is 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 habitual. It didn't. Yep. It did, he didn't have to think about it. It's built. He had he had made so many decisions of, of laying down his life and and making virtuous decisions and having that habit that it wasn't a thought. It was just a moment. It was a reaction. To do it that was a reaction there, and you see that whole book. If it hadn't been instant, he was seeing that the whole time. Right. And what about what day was this? Whose feast day was this? The day that this happened was September 29th, 2006, the feast day of St. Michael the Archangel, whom Michael was named after 25 years earlier. Do you, do you think that uh, St. Michael in his battles experienced, uh, you know, as we would call it, the blood, sweat, and tears in battle, it wasn't just... You know, St. Michael himself is a real warrior. You know, it wasn't just uh, it wasn't just like when when St. Michael battled, he went through the same. He he went through the the grit of of battle too when he cast out a third of the the angels from heaven. And then here is this 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 warrior Michael Mansour on his feast day, and St. Michael the Archangel is just right there with him in the midst of that battle. Right there with him, and I mean, just to think that all these men walked home because of that. Right, it's walked mind home. blowing. Walked home, yeah. I mean, they were pretty. They were pretty alive. But they were able. They were but they were able. But they were able the to. Shrapnel, but right. they were. They had their very lives, and they're they're so grateful for Michael and what he did. And you know, another of the seals told me in that book. You know, when I was interviewing him, he said, "The public needs to know what Michael did for everyone, what and, he did for us." And here's this beautiful thing you see. At this story as Michael's life is going on, there's almost like there's an appointment with this ship that's being built in Bath. Uh, where is it? Massachusetts or it's New Bath, England? Bath, Maine. Maine. There's this, be- this, this new state-of-the-art ship that's being built. And one day, uh, Michael's name 
will be on this ship. And, it, and it, it's like in our own lives, we have these appointments with God. We, we sometimes aren't aware of them, and sometimes we just neglect them. We, missed our, we miss our appointments, the Holy Spirit action plan moments. But all this time, I, you know, I will tell you something interesting. I know this is an aside, but I was going through old pictures in my, in my iPhone recently deleting 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 and then and i'm and i'm watching my life progress and i'm going through some pretty tough rugged times blood sweat and tears and suddenly there's a picture and it's cindy it's the first time i have a picture of my wife and Aww. all this time she was living her blood sweat and tears and i was living mine and then there was this moment of coming together and you see that uh, in the, uh, that there's a story that we're all living, we'll, but will we live the story, or will or will or will the story just pass us by? And you see in Michael this appointment that he had on that rooftop, and you see this this whole time this ship, this beautiful ship being built all through this time took years, and then there there is his name on it, and you think too about this I don't know this vision of this 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 the ship of 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 Saint Peter. The Catholic Church, this great, great, great ship, that uh, it's it. There, there's an appointment that we have too, uh, to be part of that, to be part of that church, and to uh, and to live the story, whatever the adventure that God has for us. And I see the painting behind you, of that ship out on the uh, out on the rough seas, and you know, wonder where it's been or where it's going. But it it is it's on a mission. Each one of us have a story God wants us to live, and it's a Each story. Each one of us, and it's going to be rush, rough. Mm-hmm. And it, but it, it, yeah, and it's a valiant, valiant story. How can they find your book, Rose? Well, and the last thing I want to say, Bear, yeah. about his his that reaction, we'll say, mm-hmm. is you know, some people could think, oh, it's he was reckless and just did it, right? Because maybe he didn't value his life. It was the opposite. Mm, the opposite. He yes. He valued life so much, Bear. Mm-hmm that he was willing to protect it at all costs for others. And greater gift has no man in this than to lay down to lay his down life. His life. And it was a, I mean, it's just so powerful. And it was it was just in a moment. It was just in a moment. So we have we have with us Rose Ray. I, that time just flew by. Your book is Great. is Defend Us in Battle, the story of Michael Monsoor and the, the beautiful Navy ship has his name on. Oh, there she has the full cover. If you watch it on YouTube, you we see have it. The Medal of Honor from President Bush. Praise God. Yes, I saw those. Pic- There's pictures in the book, too. Ro- Rose, yeah, pictures of the sweet boy. Give, give, us, give your love to your six wonderful children and, and Ryan, who I got a special place in my heart for. I can hear his voice in this book, to your Navy SEAL husband. we got to say aloha. You want to do the aloha with me? We'll shout aloha do do here. It? So aloha means to give breath, which is what Jesus did when he said, My peace I give you, my peace I leaveth, and he breathed. On his disciples, and he breathed the, he breathed the living soul into Adam and Eve. God the Father, you know, breathed into Adam and Eve, and so aloha means ha means breath to give breath. So, until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you, aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.